a true, honest to God t TV Superstar. legend, Superstar. Mr. Pat Sajak. <laughs> no, come on, come Ooh. on, come on. I'm sorry, I, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little bloated right now. I just had lunch at Whispering Canyon. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Was I was just, and I, was, I was telling, <laughs> and we, I was just having this conversation with him up at lunch. That he's asking me for some hidden gems. I'm like, you really need to check out Whispering Canyon oh and Geyser God. Point, right? Yeah, yeah. He's well, so you... cute in person. Well, thank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm me so Teresa. sorry. I'm I haven't so been sorry. called cute since the 1940s, <laughs> but adorable. I appreciate that. Thank adorable. you. Adorable. So, Pete, what do you got? It, the, <laughs> what do you want me to sing? Or you want to, You can ask me a question. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, Yes, sir. I, 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 I don't normally, I wouldn't normally associate you with Disney. Uh, you know, we're very lucky. For, we always been a Disney family. My, uh, my wife grew up in the East and they came down to Disney World all the time. I didn't go to Disney World until I started on a wheel because we were West Coast people. So Disneyland was our, was our place. So, um, uh, but now we do both and it's, and it's great. So, so Disney started doing a lot of things with our show. We have a lot of cross promotion uh, with them, and we do a lot of special weeks. We just taped a uh, Princess Week, which is coming up in this new season. Uh, we do they no, spot. What's I mean? Uh, it's not. It's not like I said. A lot of people think we're going to do a. <laughs> not anymore. We, we're gonna, it's it's not a. That, by the way, that week has nothing to do with uh, with Disney. It's those phones. The old oh phone, the old yeah, princess the phones phone. yeah, yeah right right so right we're doing, so we're doing princess phone week with AT and T and then later on in the year we may well I didn't know <laughs> Lord thank goodness this isn't being heard by anyone <laughs> oh, oh, oh. wow oh. okay look we're not we, we're not wheel but <laughs> we had lunch together I figure I can knock them a little bit you can say whatever you want <laughs> thank you very much you're Pat Sajak I am I am. <laughs> I, w I wake up with me every morning. <laughs> wow, and it's what's not that like? Sad. Anyway, <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, your Disney family. Um, oh yeah. So we so we started doing all these promotions, and uh, and now we're and I think it's a real good mix. I mean, Wheel of Fortune and Disney to me that works. I mean, some some marriages, sort of corporate marriages, seem a little forced, but this seems. This seems right. You know, we call ourselves America's game, and we we mean that. We aim to be that. And, you know, I think Disney has that same attitude and uh, the, the, the family nature of it all. So I think it works real well for us. And our, our viewers really like it. You know, there's a... Um, one of the uh, problems or issues you face when you do a game show, it's, it's very plug heavy. You know, we're plugging trips and we're plugging prizes and all this stuff. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> but... When it's when it's when we're doing a week with Disney, uh, the the plugging part is almost like part of the entertainment because you're seeing the characters run around and all that, and and the uh, the viewers like it. I mean, it feels less commercially heavy than our than our regular weeks because because of the Disney connection. But now, from you from you know your standpoint, vacationing here in Disneyland. Okay, let's start with resorts. What res do you have a particular resort here that you you really love? We, you know, it's funny when you, when you grew, not grew up because I was an adult when I started even going to Disneyland because I grew up in Chicago and there's no, there's no Disney Lake Michigan, unfortunately. But, um, uh, so my, my view of Disney, of the Disney world was the Magic Kingdom. I thought that's what Disney was. You know, they've done a lot of work out there and it's more, has a more of a resort feel and you have that second park now and all that. But when I was going, there was just the Magic Kingdom and I thought that was what disney was so when i came out came out here i was taken aback by you know 92 hotels and driving from one park to another and it just seemed enormous to me and now i've been here long enough i now that i know my way around it, it seems less so uh i i like them all i i like um uh i'm not a big like i, I like roller coasters but i don't like i don't like going a like this. I like going like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm, I'm with so, you. Uh, so, you know, I'm, you know, I like, I like those, you know, I like the, I like the mind train and that, that kind of thing. Uh, so, but I'm, we're, we're real big fans of the, uh, we like the, the ride. Have you been on this? What is, what is it with the, uh, the spider guy? Is what, Oh, that's out in uh, California. Yeah. Adventure. So have you, that's uh, really weird because you, you go on this ride and, and it's all, it, it reminds me technologically of, um, What's the one out here? Story Mania. 
Toy Story Mania, which we love very much. But out there, it's spi- and and in order, so you ca- you have to kill these spiders by throwing webs on them. But you do it like this, and they kind of come out of your hand. So you spend 12 minutes on this ride just doing this the whole time. It's very exhausting. It, it, it's. But I killed several spiders, so I'm very happy about it. You know, you know, all you have to do is just do this, and it works the same. Well, I'm 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 more into it than you are. That's, by the way, a good radio joke, Tony. Well, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> hi, hi. Uh, my name is Tony Shepard. I lead talent relations for the Disney Parks. And, and he Museum. also tells talent when they should shut their mouths about Secret. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you just say Secret Santa? Yeah, I'm not saying anything. I'm not. We've done a lot. We, you know, we've had um, we, when Tony Tony represents Disney when we're shooting. Um, when we're shooting in our studio out west, when we're shooting Disney-themed weeks. But we've had fun with the, a lot of characters out there. I mean, we had, we had the Dumbo ride in the studio one time. Uh, we, and the, the best thing we did, and, and, and you'll appreciate this, we had Walt's personal horse from the carousel. So oh, he had wow. it, it was his horse. Yeah, it's and, pretty- and, and, and we brought it up to the studio, and, and, and Pat lost it. It was a little, it was a moment, but we got it back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, but no, we've done that, and it's, and, and, and it's been great. Yeah. yeah. If, if, you, if you still can't find it, don't check my attic. <laughs> there you go. But we do, we do, we do love the, the Disney connection, yeah. Do you have a, a favorite restaurant? Out here, uh, yeah, boy, I, you know, there's so many we like. Well, kind of a new one you just yeah, tried, and you so, loved, and and the name escapes Citricos. So Citricos was really good. I I uh, I, I don't. It's, one of the things that happens when you're in a theme park is sometimes you'll walk into a restaurant and you're not expecting what you get. I mean, it's, it's, the food in there is absolutely fabulous. The service was fabulous. They had a terrific wine list. I mean, it's just a really, really well, nice yeah. restaurant. And you walk in, and it looks like a fine place, but it looks sort of a you know family quick grab something kind of thing. That, but it really was a beautiful... And that could be the opposite, too. You walk in a restaurant, and you're like, wow, this is beautiful. I'm inside the castle. And then you get your food, and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> this doesn't... I, I'm, not, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> but, well, but the, we other, can... the, the other one I have to say, which has become a bit of a F- Say Jack family tradition, is uh, we've done a holiday dinner the last few years at Victorian Albert's, obviously, last wow. year. Wow, yeah. 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 That's, that's but, pretty uh, That's cool. always been fun. I don't know if anybody's heard Pat read the candlelight processional at Epcot, but... Uh, I, yeah, that that I really did enjoy that a lot. That that's been a lot of fun, and I assume we'll do another one somewhere down the road. But uh, Dude, really, that oh, was hopefully. that was terrific. Uh, and Victorian Albert's is interesting because Tony Shepard here from Disney will, for example, will go to a uh, will go to Epcot to one of the food court things, and you know, and he'll say, "I'll I'll buy I'll buy the taco as long as you pick up Victorian <laughs> Alberts." <tonight." So. laughs> Sounds fair. Yeah, that sounds yeah, totally yeah. fair. So I have to tell you, what I, I you know I hate. I, should I tell? About oh that? yeah, should absolutely. <laughs> so so we go. Did, I think did Disney buy that night? Anyway, yeah, I, yeah, I think they did. So I, I did something for the for the part one, and and Disney was going to buy dinner at Victoria and Alberts. That's pretty cool. So I look at the. They give you a wine list, which is nice, but they give you a water list. So anybody ever been to a restaurant where they have a water list of one at Victoria? So. And they're all, you know, they're all, and all the waters from around the world, and they're, you know, a bottle is, is $10.99, $8.99, $15.99. And then you look at the top, there's a $100 bottle of water. Gla- Jesus supposedly, tears? Supposedly <laughs> glacier water. And I said, we have to buy this, because, <laughs> because I've never had glacier water, and we bought it, and it was really good. But the best... So, so the best part was we had gone back to LA and we had taped a week of wheel right after that. And Pat and I are talking to the executive producer, the, the previous executive producer of wheel, wonderful man named Harry Friedman. And we're telling you about this water that they only bottle, bottle 4,000 bottles a year. It comes from an iceberg in Norway and in the North pole. And, and Harry looked at him us and went, and you believed that? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I mean, for all we know, the water could have come from Cucamonga. <laughs> I know, it was, but it was really good. Really good water. Really good. It wasn't a hundred dollars good, but it was good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I had that experience. Uh, uh, was it a uh, Palo? Palo on Disney oh, Cruise on, Line on the ship. Yeah, um, that's right. They have that water. Has 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 the water menu. And the first time I saw that, it was the same thing. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I fell for it. I'm very gullible. So did I. Yeah. I, I don't know tell that you I paid hundred dollars, but I fell yeah, for it. Yeah. Something about water that kids will never understand today. They will never understand drinking out of the, the sprinkler system in somebody's front yard. 
well, <laughs> kids are growing up on bottled water. And now. you know, I, no matter what you did, no matter, and I, and of course, I did that as a kid. Yeah. But if you think back to the, you could always taste the hose. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. The metal. There was metal. <laughs> there was a slight. There was a slight tinge of. Of metal and yep. rubber, grass, <laughs> <laughs> and and see now now let your kids drink out of the hose and they'll host Wheel of Fortune. Well, I I, I, yeah. I feel I feel like I should ask a question just so I can yeah. say the wheel because I've always called it Wheel of Fortune and y'all calling it the wheel just they're seems personal. so much more. They're closer hip. friends. Well, no, I feel like, like I'm part of that now. We're, we're hip. Yeah. Hip. Hip. Can I ask you a hip question about the yeah, wheel? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Has anyone ever um, won wheel. that you did not like or that you did not Ooh. want to win? Like you were kind of like secretly he hoping stops that other wheel. person would what's win. Really, you know? What's really funny before he answers that, second time he got that question today. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I no, it's right. good. It's a good question. Uh, and, and for those of you who heard an answer earlier, I'm going to, there are two parts to that question. Number one is I have, I have great empathy for our players. They're in a very, very difficult mm -hmm. situation. And, and if you, um, it's real easy to sit at home and make fun of them and all that, but you know, throw yourself in the studio. Yeah. It's a completely, completely different game. But anyway, um, but about four or five times a season, as I said this morning, there's someone that I just want to strangle. Not very often. <laughs> and I and I don't want to kill them. I just want to cut off their air supply for a while. And and, I don't. <laughs> and, and it's very rare because generally 99.9% right. .9 they're fabulous. But sometimes you'll have a show where not the, not necessarily you're rooting against someone, you're rooting for someone. Just right. a really nice person. Yeah. Just, you know, just I and no matter it just never fails. The person you're rooting, so you're rooting against someone else. Whoever you're rooting against always wins. Yeah, yeah. Just so, and whoever you're rooting for never wins. So I try not to root. It doesn't seem to work. See, now, what, something I've always wondered, because we see the, uh, you know, on YouTube all the time, the uh, the bad answers, right? Yeah. The ones that are, the puzzles seem so obvious and they give a bad answer. How do you hold that together when that happens? Um, you, you know, it's, it's it's easier that for me, it's easier than anything because my first reaction is not a hey, stupid person or, <laughs> or to laugh. My first reaction is this poor person feels awful about doing this, probably feels uh -huh. stupid. How do I get them through this yeah. right. and through the rest of the show? Because it's like a baseball player who makes an error in the third inning and then it, strikes out the next three times because he can't get the air out of his mind. I always tell him after that, you know, that round is over. You can beat yourself mm -hmm. up later about it, but you know, shake it off. We're still moving on and you know, come on, you can, you can do this. But i I feel, you know, in these days of social media, sometimes yeah. I wonder why anyone even does the show because if you do something like that, it's there well, forever. Th yeah. But then there's the, the, there's the other side too. Um, you get to go to work and hand out, amazing prizes tens yeah. of thousands of dollars changing people's lives stories they're going to remember for the rest of their life no that's, it's true and it's not and it's not that's my the money. other side it's not my money which is really the <laughs> that's best even part. better uh but i'll tell you here but here's the thing that another thing i tell players is uh, during commercial breaks we'll talk a little bit or if someone's nervous and uh, try to calm them down and i always say this i said you know it'd be great to win money and it'd be great to win a lot of prizes. But if when next time you're at a party 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and it comes out that you were on the show, no, the last question you're going to be asked is how much did you win? They're going to want to know about the experience, what the studio looked like, what it felt like. So if you win something great, if you don't remember, you're playing with house money. If you hit bankrupt, we don't actually come and take your house and car. <laughs> so, so, you know, just relax. It's a game and have fun with it. Enjoy. The other thing is you try to get them to take in the moment because they're mm -hmm. so nervous and it goes real fast when you're up there. And so for some people, it goes so fast, they hardly knew they were there. And I want to tell them, slow it down. The game will take care of itself. Just listen to Uncle Bad. He'll get you through this. And and enjoy Look around. I'm taking, you know, see what Vanna's wearing. Look at the studio mm -hmm. and get a mental picture of it. Because it, before you know it, it's going to be over and you'll never be back in the studio again. You know, you know one of the, one of the uh, uh, great answers to a puzzle was on a, on a, on a Disney week and it went viral, this poor player. And the puzzle solution, I'm not going to get it exactly right, but the word gondola, right, was in the puzzle solution. You know, a, 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 a trip on a gondola was something like that, right? So it was an Adventures by Disney trip is what the, they won. Pat says to the contestant, oh, look, we're not going to hold you to this. But where do you, but what oh. country do you oh, think? Oh, so let me, let, and, and I don't mean to jump in, but uh, apparently I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we have the, we have these prize puzzles, and when you, if you solve the puzzle, in addition to the money you win, we throw in a prize. And it's usually a trip, and oftentimes 
the nature of the puzzle will tell you where you're going. If it's the Eiffel Tower, you're probably going to Paris, wherever it is. So a, a, a trip on a gondola. And this guy, I forgot, I think he was a college professor or something. He was. And I said to him, I said, well, I guess you can guess where you're going. And he said, yes, Paris. And I thought, no, the, gondola? not, the gondolas uh, are in. Uh, <laughs> well, th what you said was, what country do you yeah. think we're sending you to? Country. And he said, Paris. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> Well, uh, he was close. That's nerves. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. nerves. But again, you can laugh at it, but I would, you know, and we had fun with it, but you, I, I'd never mock him for it because, oh, you, no. again, it's just, it's a, it's a very scary experience. And when they go home from now on after having been on the show, they will not throw their slippers at the set and yell at players because they'll know what they're going through. Yeah, now, that's right. When we were at lunch, I mentioned this to you that I, I, I found this fascinating was I was reading. Did you buy lunch, by the way? Yes. Oh, good. No, it, it was Dine and Dash. Okay. It was Dine and Dash. <laughs> um, Check, actually, please. actually, mom bought it because um, I left my wallet down here. <laughs> by the way, I, I absolutely adore your mother. She's, Isn't she she's amazing? Yeah, she is. So Isn't sweet. she amazing? <laughs> you I have mixed feelings about, but your mother is terrific. <laughs> We all feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. See, he don't work. He, he don't work. Right. <laughs> Anyone who calls me cute can say anything she wants. And he smells good, too. When he walked by, it was like, Ooh. That was the Lysol that Ryan was <laughs> no. spraying before he got here. <laughs> anyway, I interrupted you. I apologize. Um, as I was, like, reading, reading up some stuff on your, on your biography, um, that story I, I mentioned to you uh, at lunch, that um, you were working as a weatherman yeah. uh, in L.A., and Merv Griffin saw you. And wanted you for Wheel of Fortune so much that he threatened NBC to stop taping the show because it was with Chuck Woolery. The, oh, anybody who's days. old enough to remember um, with Chuck Woolery that if they didn't take Pat Sajak, that they, he was going to stop taping the show. And that was a true story. Yeah, Mer Merv, uh, Merv is a great supporter. I, you know, when you work in local television in L.A., in a way you're auditioning every day because producers are at home watching the news. And uh, uh, so I, I, we, Mer Merv got to be a really good friend, especially after he sold the show back. He, he sold the show very early on in the late 80s. And um, so we just got to be pals. It was more than a, a employee employer thing. And we were talking about that one day. And he said, you know what, really, you know, the way Merv talked, oh, you know, you know, know what pushed me over the edge about you? And I thought you were great. I'm watching one. Well, here's what happens one night. And you never know what's going to tickle people's fancy and, and get you a show. Uh, so I'm doing the weather. And in Los Angeles, you go through several a period of several weeks where there is no weather. It's every day is 75 degrees or 80 degrees. And it's in the 60s at night. And there's no, you know, just uh, there's no rain and whatever. So as a weatherman, it's hard to how do you you know how do you stretch that into three minutes so you're always looking for something silly to do so one night i'm introduced by the anchor man and uh and i and i apologize i had a little uh, band-aid on my chin and i said you know i cut myself this morning it's a little unsightly i apologize so i now i start doing the weather and every time we would they would cut away to a satellite map or a view of something or a piece of film and then come back to me the band-aid had moved i would move it around <laughs> now it's really stupid but Merv thought that was the greatest bit of comedy he had ever seen in his life. And, and, and so the Band-Aid got me the job, pretty much. What about you guys? One question. Right here. How did you start your career in television? Uh, I, you know, I was working. I, I, I always knew I wanted to be in broadcasting, and I started in radio like a lot of people did. And I was working in a, a little place. And I, I served in, in Vietnam for a while, and I did radio there. I was the morning, I was the good morning Vietnam guy there. Wow. And um, a lot of people don't know yeah. that. Yeah. So Is after, that based on you? Uh, no, it was, it, it, it was, there was a guy named Adrian Cronauer. Oh, right, right, who was, right. Who right. was there a couple right. of tours before I was, and he started doing that, and that became the thing you did when you got that show, you had to do that. And by the way, wow. when, there, when you're in an end, zone you don't want to be yelling at six o'clock in the morning but anyway I did, I did so so I did that and then I was just and then I spent the last six months of my army career at, uh, three years in the uh, in Washington and then I got out of the army and I couldn't get a job in broadcasting anywhere uh, in the whole Washington Baltimore area and a friend of mine had a friend who had a, had a little radio station in Murray Kentucky of all places in extreme southwestern Kentucky and uh, 250 watt tiny town and i i had to work and i went there and i worked there for about a year 
minimum wage job working from seven to midnight doing rock and roll radio. And at one point I looked at myself in the mirror when I got up and I said, I'm 25, I'm making a dollar 80 an hour and I'm playing these songs. I'm living in Murray, Kentucky, which is a fine city, but I want to be there the rest of my life. I got to do something. I packed up the U-Haul. I went to the nearest big city, which was Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I kept knocking on doors. I worked at Howard Johnson for a while trying to, and I finally got the attention of, of a radio, of a television station, WSM, home of the Grand Ole Opry, that hired me for their television station as a, as a staff announcer. I would just do station breaks. So a lot, it's a long answer to uh, Nashville was my first television job. And by the time I left there five years later to come to L.A., uh, when they offered me the weather job, it, I had done a lot of things. I'd done, I did the weather. I, did, I hosted talk shows. I did all that kind of stuff. But Nashville was, was the only city. The only cities I've worked in in television were Nashville and Los Angeles. Wow. Wow. It, it, inspirational right inspirational how it works out and then you you know you you move you move a band-aid around your face a couple of times <laughs> and an icon like merv griffin sees you likes it and all of a sudden now you, you're pat's agent you know every now and then it occurs to you and i'm you know i we grew i grew up in an industrial part of chicago and you know and look everybody has stories to tell and you know unless you were born you know and born wealthy uh most of us had difficult times and you know i i remember hiding behind the couch with my mother when the bill collector was at the door and all that stuff so every now and then when you like you're in the mediterranean merv griffin's yacht that will hit you and you'll go yeah. what am i doing how did right. this happen you know so it i try to appreciate that stuff because Always. it's re it's real easy to lose sight of your beginnings when you're when you've been successful and people kind of fawn over you a little bit and they call you cute even if you're not uh it's <laughs> No, I mean, you are. You are cute. No, I appreciate that. But it, but it is it is easy. To, and, and that's why there are a few people in the, my business, I'm ashamed to say, who are kind of jerks because they forget that and they think they were born to it and they think they deserve it. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. I've worked hard for it. I'm not ashamed of my success. I'm proud of it. But uh, you can't forget, no matter what business you're in, you, it's, it's a bad thing to forget where you came from. Don't ever forget you're blessed. Yep. And by the way, speaking of blessed, you know, we're all blessed in this room. And I am grateful to all of you for what you guys are doing, as well as all the folks who are here this weekend for this extraordinary and it was good to get to know what you guys and what you do and 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 the and all the Diz folks and all the money you're helping to raise it's yeah. it's terrific it's an amazing and, cause and oh. a pleasure for me to be here thank this, you all this has I, really been a highlight thank you thank you, uh, thank you sir pat sajak